You want to you want to know what the big picture is? I will tell in Mendham you and uh, conference report you. I will tell you what the real big picture is. I didn't invent it, but this is the big picture. The question is: Is life worth living? There's those that answer yes, and there's those that answer no. There's you, no. There's those that answer uh, no and commit suicide, and that can be okay and even noble or heroic in some cases, according to some moral systems. There are those that say yes and do everything they can to make life good in their own life and the environment around them and, the, and therefore in the lives around them. That's noble and good. There's even those that say, yes, life is worth living, but do something that ends their own life. You know, risk their life to save someone else, for example. Also, splendid. The real problem is people that say, no, life is not worth living, but they go on living. They act to go on living and even accumulate massive amounts of wealth. And the problem is that they, these, this last group runs things. That's the philosophical group that runs things. That's the philosophy of the group that's been in power for a long time. The advent of Christianity, opportunistically moving in on a decaying, feudal mindset, created an idea life isn't worth living. And this was great because if you're not going to help your poor get up out of poverty and all have a, a decent standard of living, it's good if you could tell yourself, hey, well, you know, no matter what we do for him, life's miserable anyway. It's just doggy dog. No matter what you do, look, I am as rich as a king and I have a doggy dog existence too. Yeah, right. Sure you do. I mean, what you think is hard living is not actually hard living. Now, in Mandam, your system is much better than this in the sense that it, it emphasizes why you should still help people even though really death is the only answer. So there's an out because it's like, I suggest death, but if you don't want death, you know, it's cake or death, cake or death. <laughs> you should watch that, actually. You know, it's like, who would you can have cake or death? Death is the better answer. But if you just like some cake, here you go. <laughs> so then it's like, we're all out of cake. Um, yeah. But... Um, you know, you want uh, Gary's system emphasizes there's that there's a reason to bring people up out of uh, out of suffering. So that's uh, it's redeemability there. But in terms of our society, there's a, a a similar but also crucially different version of suffering uh, philosophy, which is sort of like works hand in hand with the well. I'm it's lucky I'm rich, or it's lucky. I was born to a rich family. It's lucky my grandfather fought hard and got all this money because I probably wouldn't be able to. Boy, I'm lucky, basically. And there's no reason for me to give up my comforts and just make me more suffering and less suffering doesn't really matter. And there's no reason for me to bring other people up because it's all going to be shit anyway. And look how much I hate my father. And they would probably be sad if they had wealth, too. Well, there's some truth in that part, actually. But, um... This, this tradition of being against life. And then, and then these, how dare somebody against life want to have power over how people live, you know? Now, that would they admit that they're against life? No, but they, they are. They're inhibited and just a bunch of psychoses that we've had for centuries and centuries now. It's really getting ridiculous. Um, it looks like it's breaking down, and then you just see how resilient it is, and it's hard to know which part just isn't going to break down. But that's the real elephant in the room, you know. We need to be asking how to live life, what do we do, and not be focusing on does it exist, and should we believe we have free will. Look, our decisions make a difference in the way perceptions appear to come to us. Doesn't matter which, it, that, it matters which part we're misinterpreting, but whichever part we're misinterpreting, doesn't mean it's not existing, you know. Our decisions 
the need for us to believe we can make a difference. That's the elephant in the room. If, if you don't believe there is a way and principle for us to make a difference, then all this other stuff about suffering and whatnot just doesn't matter. So that's the elephant in the room, um, along with uh, this, this question of, uh, is life worth living? And the fact that the peoples that say no are the philosophically dominant group, and they have dominated for centuries and centuries. And, uh, you know, you got to shake it off.